In today's video, I'm going to show you um, how to develop a ResSim model from scratch. The first thing you want to do is uh, put a uh, develop a local directory on your computer where the ResSim model will reside. Um, and then once you do that, then you go to Tools, Options, and then you map to that location. So you just hit Add Location. In this case, I called it a Sample Model. And um, it resides on my local drive in something called uh, or a directory called YouTube model. Um, after that, I want to do a new watershed. In this case, I've already developed the watershed, but basically you just give it a name. And the name that I gave it is sample model. Um, you can put a description in there if you want. Uh, tell it the location. Um, define your units, whether they're English or SI, and then uh, let it know what time zone that you're using. Um, sorry, and then I've already done that, so I'll jump in now to um, what you actually do in this first module that's called the Watershed Setup Module. And this is where you put in things like your stream alignment, your reservoir, and your computation points. So the first thing to do is just draw your stream alignment. You can see that this tool is the stream alignment tool. Now you control and do a left click and then um, let up on control and then drag wherever you want your stream alignment to end. And this can be georeferenced. I'm just going to draw a stick figure to, to just show you how to develop a simple model. So we can just call this main stem. Um, this is still highlighted, the stream alignment. So let's say I wanted to put a tributary in, same thing, control, left click, let up on control, and then click again. And then we can call this the trib. And then I'll ask if it's okay to connect those two and we'll put in yes. Um, and remember you're drawing these from the upstream end to the downstream end. Now I'm going to put a reservoir on the main stem. And again, you draw that from upstream to downstream. So I'll select the reservoir tool. Um, I hold down control, I click, I let up on control, click again, and then it asks me to name the reservoir. So I'm just gonna call that main stem res. And I can put in some of these computation points. And you wanna make sure that you put one of these in at the upstream end of your main uh, stream and also any tributaries that you have. And we need to have flow that comes in at the upstream end of the main tributary uh, of the main stem and also the tributaries. So we'll call this upstream and trib. Um, I also like to put one at this junction here and because it'll uh, ask for the placement of the computation point, um, and I want it right at the stream junction. Give it a name, and it'll just help to draw in my routing breaches. Here we can call this the downstream end of the model. Okay, so I put in uh, one, two, three, four computation points, and you can see that rest sim automatically added two computation points at both the upstream and downstream end of the reservoir that you added to the model. Once you get done with that, then you save your configuration. Sorry, you have to do a new configuration. And we'll just call this um, sample. Uh, it asks for a time step, but it doesn't really use this time step for anything. Um, you can use your current date as the, the base date. You can put a description in if you want to and then just hit OK. Okay, so now you have a very simple model drawn in the watershed setup module with the configuration saved. Um, now what I want to do is move on to the Reservoir Network module. I want to do a new network. And in this case, I can just call it, you know, uh, Sample Network. And again, we'll keep these uh, very simple. 
and you can see that the um, everything that you put in on the watershed setup module now comes into the reservoir network. So one of the first things that I typically do is I put in my reaches. So again, you do a uh, um, you select your reach tool, you do a control click, and then let up on control um, move, and I typically will draw these in working from upstream to downstream um, in the model, but drawing it from the upstream to the downstream point. So I just connect each junction. You can rename these junctions if you want to. I, for simplicity, I'm just going to leave these as, as is, um, oh, using the default name. Now, if you go look at one of these reaches, it automatically defaults to null routing. I actually recommend that you use null routing for this first model as you're developing it, uh, just to do a simple test to make sure that everything works okay. Um, So we have our reaches in. Now what we want to do is we need to add in local inflow at these upstream points, or at least at these upstream points. You can put local inflows at any one of the junctions. Um, sorry, you have to select the junction tool and then do edit junction properties, do a local flow, and got to make sure that this is in the first row. So you can call it main inflow. You can scale that inflow any way that you want to. Um, in this case, we're just going to use a factor of one. So we're not going to do any scaling to the inflow. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to put in the tributary inflow and I'm going to use a scale factor of one. Okay. Now I need to actually um, describe uh, some physical and operational data at the reservoir. So I'll select my reservoir tool and then I'll right click and I'll do edit reservoir properties. First thing I need to do is to put in elevation storage. You can put in elevation area also if evaporation is a concern. Um, to keep this simple, I'm going to just neglect evaporation so um, we don't actually have to fill in the area at this point. So a very simple relationship between elevation and storage. So um, at elevation zero, I just have a very small storage of 500 acre feet. Elevation 100, um, you have 200,000 acre feet. I need to put in a, you can put in an elevation at the top of the dam and a length at the top of the dam if you expect it to overtop. It doesn't need that um, to run. Um, it only needs it if it's going to overtop and it'll treat things as a weir. So for now, I think we can just leave that blank, but keep that in mind. If you do expect overtopping, then you want to have that filled in. And we'll just, uh, did not want to do that. Um, I wanted to add a controlled outlet. So what I do is I left click on the dam at the main stem and I do add controlled outlet. And then what I need to do is uh, develop an elevation capacity curve for this. So Again, I'm going to do a very simple relationship and just give it a constant capacity for the entire range of elevations of 10,000 cubic feet per second. Uh, with that, I think I have everything that I need um, for the physical data. Um, go to the operations data. We want to do operations new. And we can actually just call this flow through. I always recommend doing a flow through model. It's one where you don't have any rules at all specified. Um, and you just start at top of conservation and um, just pass in flow and just test that uh, initial behavior before you start adding other stuff to the model. So basically keep it simple and then start to build from there. So we need to put in elevations for flood control. 
uh, conservation and inactive. So for flood control, uh, we can probably put in 90. By the way, this is the top of top elevation for conservation. We can put in 75. For inactive, you can put in 50. And you can see it fills in this chart over here just to show you where the different zones are. You can apply that. Um, and now I think that we're okay with the physical and the operational data so we'll just hit OK. And now what we need to do is we need to develop an alternative. So this is going to be our flow through alternative. The network that we're using is sample network and so then we hit OK. Uh, for this we want to use a time step of one hour. You want to define the operation set for each one of your reservoirs. Now you only have one reservoir and you have one operation set and that's flow through. Uh, for look back, I want to, um, I'll describe look back in another video, but basically it's to get the model going. It's to get the model warmed up. Now I want to start right at the top of conservation. Um, and then the look back release, I know that um, I have a constant release file that I'm going to use as my inflow. So I want that to just to pass that inflow. And I know I'm going to have 500 coming in. At least I think that's what I put in there. Um, and now I need to define a time series. Um, I'll show you in another video how you make the time series file. But for now, we're going to go out there and we're going to map to our time series file. So I have a time series file that's just called constant 500 CFS. I open that. I have one path in there. And again, in a separate video, I'll show you DSS. But it's in uh, the database that uh, RESSIM uses is the HEC program called DSS. So I'm just going to set my path name. And you can see it automatically fills that out. And I'm going to use the same DSS file and DSS path both for the main inflow and also for the tributary inflow. Um, I don't have any observed data um, that I'm comparing to, so actually I think that we're okay with this. So we can do alternative save, and then uh, we can close it. Um, now I, I think that we're done with, uh, assuming that I haven't forgotten anything, I'm pretty sure that we're done with everything that we need to have created our alternative. And now we'll move to the simulation. We're going, it is a simulation module, and we're going to just create a new simulation. Okay, and so we're going to call this early 2019 simulation. And you got to make sure that you have data for the, uh, the time period where you're running this model. Um, and so I believe I developed data for January of 2019. And so for my start date, I just want it to be 10 January 2019. Um, you got to put a time in there. So let's say it starts at 12. Now look back has to be before start date. And you got to make sure you have data for your look back period also. And my end date is going to be 25 January 2019 at 1200. I only have one alternative to select, so I select that. And assuming that I did everything correctly, you can see that I have this simulation that's called early 2019 simulation. It uses the alternative flow through alternative, so I can compute this. And then it runs to 100%, so it looks like that we did it correctly. We can go and look at our data. Um, so if we plot it, this is our elevation. You can see that it started at 75. By the way, this vertical dash line is the, um, the, the um, end of the look back period and start of the simulation period. So all through my look back period, it's at 75. And it just stays at 75 because that's top of conservation. I'll go over the internal logic of RESSIM in another video. And the flow is just um, both inflow and outflow is 500. Um, 
if you want to test the connectivity, remember that you had 500 coming in at this point. It passes through the reservoir. You have 500 coming in at this point. So if I looked at this junction and I plot it, you can see now that I do have 1,000 uh, cubic feet per second as my total flow. Um, the cumulative local flow is basically anything that doesn't pass through a reservoir. So in this case, you can see that 500 of that passes through a reservoir, but 500 doesn't. So that's why you have 500 as cumulative local. Um, so it's a very simple way of building a res sim model. And normally this is how I start all of the models by developing this, testing the continuity. And then after that, I'll build the rule set slowly and test the behavior of the rules. And um, once I'm happy with it, then I'll, I'll incrementally save um, the, the model until I have a complete model, you know, that I'm happy with the behavior of all of the rules and, and that it's giving me results that make sense. Uh, so look for future videos on uh, the development of RESSIM and, and feel free to check out my blog. I have a lot of information on that. It's hec-resim.blogspot.com. Thanks for watching the video.